Visions Season 1 Thoughts Star Wars Show. So, loved every episode so far. So please note that when I say some episodes are slow, I'm being descriptive, not critical. I don't think that all Star Wars has to move fast. All episodes have incredible animation, amazing action, and cool concepts. Now, let's see. Yes. Spoilers for everything Star Wars leading up to this show, including this season. So, let's dive right into The Duels, which is episode one. I love the classic black and white film scratches look. And yeah, so this is Seven Samurai. I like the misdirect that there are some fighting for the villagers from the very start. The Gatling gun is awesome. So is that thing that splits the Kyber Crystal Saber into a bunch of sabers. The umbrella looking thing, just amazing. Really cool when the Ronin stops the saber in midair. It's the kind of thing where if it was regular steel sword, he would have clasped it between his hands, but obviously you can't do that with a searing hot lightsaber. Very effective twist when it turns out the Ronin is a Sith. Seen through the red lightsaber. Love the sweeping camera in several parts of this episode. The droid is incredibly effective. No wonder the Ronin was so determined that it be fixed. I really appreciate the minimal use of color here. It's basically blasters, lightsabers, and that kind of thing and everything else is black and white. I, f I find it very effective. And that brings us to episode 2 Tatooine Rhapsody. The drummer has three heads and six arms. Love it. I, I can imagine a lot of drummers watch this episode and were like, that's what I'm missing. And the droid plays the recording of the first time they played together. Super manipulative. Reminds me of R2-D2 doing similar in The Last Jedi. The sweeping establishing shot of the stands is amazing. And, yeah, I think... I think each of the episodes in this season has at least one really amazing shot with, like... Yeah, just it'll it'll sweep across something or, or the like. Even Jabba cannot help but dance along, though for him it's just moving the tail. And that brings us to episode three, the twins. <clears throat> Incredible opening where the Star Destroyer is in shadow until moving into the light. Two Star Destroyers connecting in the middle, forming a Death Star. I love it. I really love evil C-3PO crying in nostalgia over racing the twins. And, you know, it is completely clear. No, he is straight up evil. Like, he's he's really, really, you know, he's, he loves this idea that they're going to be really destructive. So, but, you know, he still has feelings. We get another incredible shot. This time the camera pulls out when Carrie goes to grab the power core. And I appreciate that several of these, it's stuff that you could only do in animation. Like, there is no way that you could pull the camera that far out in live action. You know, you'd, you'd have to supplement with CG at the very least. You couldn't do it without any kind of, you know, that's... I, I like when, when you do that kind of thing as a, you know, I mean, when you, when you can and it works for the for the short and duo fires up the x-wing manages to shoot a couple of times taking out the ATSTs and troopers am uses telekinesis to try to get the kyber crystal out of the x-wing as it's flying and then uses it to power a bunch of lightsabers breathtaking duel kari cuts open Star Destroyer ends up landing on Tatooine, evident by the twin suns, and the fact that Star Wars is in love with that planet. So yeah, there's a real Luke Vader thing going on here. I approve. And it is, of course, cute that, you know, twin suns, twin, you know, Sith. Which brings us to episode four, The Village Bride. So yeah, this episode starts with a slower pace than the first three, so we can really take in the love of nature, which you know I am here for, and has always been a part of Star Wars, and the celebration before we realize how bad the situation with the Raiders are. 
That's all war is, nothing but loss. Very true. Understandably, some of the villagers think they should be fighting the raiders, and others think it's hopeless. Utterly, utterly hopeless. The Jedi reveals she can use the Force preventing the execution of the Sister of the Bride. And, yeah, ever since Dark Forces 1, I've always loved yellow lightsabers, if you know, you know. So, very happy to see one here, and, yeah, that brings us to Episode 5, The Ninth Jedi. I love both the camera pulling back and the machine pulling back. And, yeah, we see a bunch of masterless Jedi have answered the call. The spinning hologram is visually compelling. I wonder how Margrave doesn't get ridiculously dizzy sitting on that thing. I like the mystery and slow build. I really appreciate the idea of lightsabers that are red if you're Sith, and, it, you know, either blue or green if you're Jedi. You just have to pick up the saber, it'll glow a certain color, rather than you build a lightsaber and it glows the color that they're corresponding to. And the girl manages to escape with the lightsabers. The guy's captured. And I, I like the thing with, oh, you know, it's it's see-through, so my, it, uh, you know, it's it's it looks different. So I guess I'm not good enough with the force. And we get a shot of the guy, and like, you know, he's not gonna say it out loud, but we can tell that he knows better. I've never seen a lightsaber in real life before. That really must be an amazing experience. So she's using her lightsaber to deflect fire whilst flying backwards through the trees. Amazing. I love the old tea-sipping droid that's on his break. And another episode that moved kind of slow. And at least at first. And yeah. You know, like with episode 4, I really appreciate the variety. There's not much variety in the pacing of the movies. They're still waiting for Margrave. Waiting for Godot had less waiting than this. Chilling when all the Sith reveal themselves. I've been here the entire time. I guess we're starting up a game changer then. And the action is amazing as usual. I love that the end shot makes the place look like a, a lightsaber. And it was, a, it was a very clever plan, you know, this thing of luring in, because he knew that the, you know, yeah, he was hoping that the Jedi would show up, but he realized, oh, you know, a bunch of Jedi have been killed, maybe Sith will try to take their place, gotta make sure to, you know, keep the, yeah, and, and just the, the fight with so many participants that all had lightsabers. Really, really cool. Episode 6, T.O.B. 1. We dip some, we dip into some more child-friendly anime territory here. T.O. likes playing Jedi, don't we all? And the reason he was not allowed to go to the basement is because the professor used to be a Jedi. He has some of the stuff down there. And when T.O. comes back, he's determined to help fulfill the professor's dream. Super excited about Rain, so he's definitely neither Danish nor British. The Inquisitor comes back asking, Where did you come from? Where did you go? Where did you come from, T.O.B.O.? And, yeah, very cool fight between them. And I have to admit, I haven't myself watched Astro Boy, but I 100% buy that... The, the, you know, I've, I've seen others say this was very inspired by that. I've seen pictures, you know, clips. So, yeah, it's it's very clear that they're trying to, you know, any any anime fans who really love Astro Boy or that kind of thing might watch this episode and be like, oh, I guess Star Wars is for me, too. And that brings us to the, the seventh episode, The Elder. I really like seeing another wise, patient Jedi that isn't quick to jump into a fight. This is what Ben, Kenobi, and Yoda are like, in the original trilogy at least. We don't get much of this in the prequel trilogy, or a lot of media that has come since. The Clone Wars had at least one like that, but not a major character. Another somewhat slow-paced episode. And they find the animal determined it has been killed by a lightsaber. 
and the Elder is right behind the Padawan. I love the lightsaber episodes in this episode. They feel more like the kind of samurai-inspired one that we got in A New Hope. Nothing like the hyperkinetic ones of the prequels. I love the detail that the heavy rain leads to some raindrops hitting lightsaber blades, evaporating. And the Elder uses Force Lightning to block the Master's lightsaber. And the Jedi does manage to win, in part because the Padawan wasn't quite dead. It might not have gone that way if the Elder had made sure to finish him off instead of rushing into battle with the Master. As we've seen with the Empire, the evil in a Star Wars story loses because of the overconfidence and arrogance that they display. I really love the Elder's body falling apart in no time. Like, evidently, he was spending a lot of force ability just staying alive at his advanced age and you know I mean he does you know that they, they say I mean the, it can't be a Sith they've been extinct for I think did they say thousands of years I think they, they certainly a long time you know and he says the Sith were too obsessed with gaining power or something like that you know in other words he knew Sith you know so he's been around for that long and just staying alive through just sheer force of will when it would be, you know, it would just be natural for him to accept my time has passed. It will not last forever. Just tell, your sad if you, tell yourself that if you ever find yourself watching The Return of the Jedi. You're saying I will get stronger? I mean, you can't exactly get weaker. And that brings us to Episode 8, Lop and Ocho amazing sweeping shot as we're introduced to Tao and Ocho rescues Lop, her father not being completely happy with the idea at first and we do a time jump, the farther to part in an attack against the Empire and there's discussion of the Empire Ocho joins and their father gives Lop the lightsaber, pulls some more sabotage Lop goes to fight Ocho who is now in an Imperial uniform and now she says, you're not part of this family. Just heartbreaking and amazing fight. And I really appreciate this, like, she's basically, you know, ov over time, the, the Empire really got to her, which is, you know, and, and basically, like, took away the, she, she was such a sweet person at first, you know, when we first meet her. And you know, ends up being this really harsh, cruel person, and yeah, that is the kind of thing, you know, fascism wears you down when you are living under their rule, so just, yeah, really, really great job there. I guess this is a fine place to, to say, you know, apparently, you know, the, the actually, I will just, let's see. Yeah, one, one critic said, you know, each of these shorts play like auditions for continuing series rather than organic holes. None feel really self-contained. Some even end with obvious cliffhangers. And yeah, you know, that's definitely, I, I agree with that assessment. And I kind of wish it wasn't like that. But at the same, you know, I would watch a show based on any of these nine shorts. Now, that brings us to the finale, episode 9, Akakiri. So, yeah, again, great action. And, yeah, so the, the, the Jedi here, I will have his name momentarily. His name is... Subaki, you know, he keeps seeing this vision of someone dying, and he can't see what it is because they're wearing a mask. And at the end of the episode, it does come true. And let's see, yeah, so he he gets knocked out because the the vision is is so overpowering. And those are some very quirky guides. Really, really cool when we see the heavy rain, just like nothing looks like anime does. I love it. And yeah, this episode is also not really action heavy, and I approve. 
and let's see the yeah so the the sister comes in and I have to admit I I'm not entirely sure if maybe there's a little bit of like transphobia going on with the sister because she like she's very masculine and I kind of get the sense that we're supposed to be put off by her masculinity so yeah not a fan of that and yeah he managed um, the Subaki was tricked by Masako into you know attacking the princess in a, in a mask that was the vision and yeah the together they actually bring her back to life oh right yeah yeah forming a dyad it says on Wikipedia that makes a lot of sense that that's what yeah I think that is what I have to say about the entire first season right right that it, yes um yeah this is this is my new favorite uh, you know so so comparing with you know, I've watched all the one, all the, other than droids and Ewoks. I might watch them at some point. I just haven't yet. You know, I've I've watched all of the up to and including this season. I've ah, uh, hold on. I haven't watched the entirety of season one of the Bad Batch yet, so that one will not be included in this. But yeah, um, Resistance, right? Ranking worst to best. Whether we're talking the overall season, the season opener, the season finale, you know, Resistance Season 1, Resistance Season 2 are at the bottom. And then, other than that, it's it's all the other shows leaning up to and including this one. This is my new favorite. So, yeah. I, yeah. And, and um, to be clear, I am also doing The Bad Batch. Um... I just decided, you know, this is only nine episodes, that's 16, so I, I figured I might as well do, you know, in between, so that, yeah. And that is it for this one, so, yeah. Um, tomorrow I will probably do an episode, a, a vlog about the most recent episode of Secret Invasion, one about the most recent episode that has come to Disney Plus here where I live of True Lies and The Clearing and I might also do a review of The Clearing it's not quite um, let's see it's still yeah it's, according to it's apparently still not been confirmed for there to be a season two of The Clearing and if they end up making another more than one season I'll do reviews of those as as well so yeah <clears throat> and a movie Saturday and right and Thursday I will probably do the most recent episode I've gotten to of Scream Queens so I hope to catch you for one of those may the force live long and prosper